The Jurassic series is home to many horrors to the average human, boasting some of the strongest dinosaurs to ever exist, such as the Tyrannosaurus rex, Ankylosaurus, and Brachiosaurus, and many, many more. But with that being said, the Jurassic series also has some of its own custom dinos, such as the Scorpius rex or the Indoraptor. But there is one that shines above them all, needing the power of man, raptors, rexy, and the Mosasaurus to take it down. That of course being the Indominus rex. And Skull Island, the oldest monster island of all time, having many re-envisions of it throughout its almost 100 year lifespan. But, besides Kong himself, there's a beast that has taken the spotlight. That of course being the Hypervores out of the Skull Crawlers. Sorry V-Rex, you're a close third though. Hello everyone, it's your host and favorite Kaiju Godzilla guy, and today we're taking a look at the two most dangerous beasts from the past few years, the Indominus Rex and the Skull Crawler. And our end goal is to put them into a ring and figure out who would come out on top. Speaking of the past few years, yes, I'm aware, I'm two years late to this, but cut me some slack. Two years ago, I'd still making videos like this. Hello everyone, it is Godzilla Guy. Today we're going to be reviewing the 2021 Godzilla vs. Kong SC Monster Wars figures of both of them. Um, this is just an honest review in my opinion. Remember, my opinion. You know what? Like, while making the script, I rewatched that entire video. It's actually not that bad. It's probably one of my better figure videos. So, if you want to go watch that, by all means, go for it. I'm super excited to do this video, as it is my first Jurassic video and dinosaur video in general. So to any dino fans watching, I already have quite a few other ones planned down the road. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to subscribe. And I hope I don't make anyone too mad. But I hope you all enjoy the video. So first up, we need to go over some rules. In general info, that needs to be taken into account when this fight starts. Firstly, the Indominus Rex. Firstly, this will be a fully grown version, so slightly larger than the one we see in the film, but I'll cover her measurements when that time comes. But now to discredit some claims. Firstly, she did not survive a rocket launcher straight on as the rocket itself did not hit, but she did tank the explosion, so she does get some credit for that. Also, just to note, I've seen a lot of Jurassic fans say that Endom should be able to pull off any of Rexy's past feats, thanks to the fact that Endom beat Rexy, but have to keep in mind, this is a much older and weaker Rexy, who has not been able to get proper exercise and fight other dinosaurs in a long, long time. Now, I understand a fully grown Endom should be stronger than what we see on screen, but we can't say for certain how much stronger. So we're still just gonna use her feats that we see outright, but adding in her new measurements. Really the only thing you could increase over time would be her battle IQ, as she would have fought more dinos at this point, and speed, which I'll cover when it comes up. Now onto the skull crawler. I want to say far in advance before I get comments saying, Oh, he, he was able to throw Kong, he took a boulder to the face, blah blah blah. No, my friend, that was the skull devil, aka Ramorak. We're looking at these skull crawlers, the smaller ones, though not as small as the ones we see on screen, just a little bit larger. And finally, we will assume this takes place in a swampy forest area, so they both have some idea on how to perform in this environment, and use it to their advantage. So, with that being said, let's go over the categories I'll be fighting for, these being Strength, Speed, Durability, IQ, Battle IQ, Abilities, Agility, Overall Size, Physical Weaponry, and an odd category, but I'll explain when that time comes, that being Leverage. So, without further ado, and many days of writing, I present to you a video that is two years late. Today, we answer who would win in a fight between Jurassic World and Dominus Rex and Skull Island's Skull Crawler. First up is Strength. Who can lift more in this fight? Starting with the Indom. Now, she has some good feats, such as completely breaking the gyrosphere and smacking Blue so hard she cracks seemingly a stone pillar. But I know what you're here to see. In the movie, the Indom showcases two times where she overpowers and then rolls over two dinosaurs, those being Rexy and Ankylosaurus. The Jurassic World Ankylosaurus weighing somewhere from 4 to 8 tons and Rexy weighing in at 9. So overall a very good showcase, but there is one thing I have yet to see anyone talk about. That being the humans in Jurassic World fully believed Indom got out of her cage, meaning they fully believe she can lift her own body weight. And I'll readdress it in more detail later, but it is assumed that the younger Indom weighs around 10 tons, and a fully grown one would weigh around 12 to 14. So they truly believe she lifted herself up, that being around 10 tons. So a fully grown version should be able to do the same. So overall she can easily lift 9 tons, possibly 10, and if you really want to wank her, 12 to 14. Next up is the Skull Crawler. The Skull Crawler was able to break through a massive Triceratops skull, completely and utterly destroying it, as if it was a bomb. But that's really about it for the smaller ones. But they do have their third limb, that being their tail, but again, the young ones don't really utilize it in a useful way. So yeah, strength goes to the in- Hmm? What? I, I mean, yeah, he can support his own weight, why? Oh. Uh, well, that's a little unfair, but I mean, yeah. If the skull crawler can hold up its own body weight, that being 40 tons at the minimum, and then climb around the way it does, that means pretty easily the winner for strength goes to the skull crawler. Next up is speed. Now the end job in Jurassic World was stated to be run at 30 miles an hour. Now normally our little friend the square cube would come in and ruin everything, but again the end dom should be slower due to the fact that her muscles aren't growing as fast as her weight, but that's not always true. 
This is assuming the indom is actually growing up properly. If a habitat provides a healthy growing environment and food, that along with the animal getting plenty of exercise, which in turn promotes healthy muscle growth, then in that case, the indom will not only keep its speed of 30 miles an hour, but possibly get even faster, most likely up to around 40. Now into the skull crawler. Now there is no given speed, but given their stride, shout out Goji Center, it should be naturally faster. That along with the fact that they literally jump around like it's nothing, literally propelling themselves at times, I think it's pretty clear when it comes to speed, the skull crawler has the endo beat. Next up is durability. The Dominus has showcased many great feats in durability. Firstly, she was able to take gunshot fire not only to the face, but seemingly in the mouth. Now we don't know exactly what type of gun it was, it's still a great feat. She also took modern gunfire like a champ in the raptor chase, showing no signs of pain. And as we said at the start, she took an AT4 rocket launcher explosion with, again, really no visible damage. And of course, she took many bites and slashes from Rexy and the raptors. But her best feat is shown when she no-celled an Ankylosaurus tail swipe, which would normally break a dinosaur bone with ease. Now to the Skull Crawler. He was able to take 50 cal fire with no issue. And while this is a strength feat, it's also a durability feat. That being how easily the Skull Crawler broke the massive Triceratops skull. But there is an issue. The Skull Crawler is only durable on their skulls. Everywhere else can cut pretty easily. And as we'll see in physical weaponry, that's going to be a big issue for the Skull Crawler. So the winner for durability is the Indominus Rex. Now into IQ. I don't really think I need to go in depth on this one. The Indom was able to outsmart humans at some times and... The skull crawler is just kind of an idiot, so the winner for IQ pretty easily is the Indominus Rex. Next up is Battle IQ. Now, the Indo is pretty easy to answer, that being that she's fought humans and Ankylosaurus, Apatosauruses, Raptors, Rexy, and at a young age fought, killed, and then further ate her own sibling. Now, the skull crawler. Now, we see outright that they fight Kongs and kill Skier Buffalo, but then you have to remember these guys live on Skull Island, which is full of monsters that, as we know, are more than happy to throw hands at any point in time. So, for Battle IQ, while it is a little headcanon-ish, I think it's reasonable to say the Skullcrawler takes this category. Stamina. Well, this one really depends on which one of them has gamer subs in their system. God, that was about as smooth as sandpaper. For those who don't know, I'm a proud partner with Gamer Subs, the only energy drink company that is actually giving you healthy ingredients that you need for gaming, workouts, or just to focus on something your absolute best. I'm able to go more in depth on how good it is, but I mean, you can just look at the thousands of five-star reviews and get the answer yourself. But what seems to really drive you all to purchase this is uh, this right here. Yeah. If we get enough sales by using code GodzillaGuy at checkout, or just clicking the first link down below, we'll be able to slap this sucker onto a bottle. So again, check out the first link down below if you want to get energized. Next up is their abilities. Now, Endom has a lot of random ones, so I apologize if I miss any, but the main ones are camouflage, thermal vision, or just detection, and apparently temperature manipulation in their own body. Now to the skull crawler. The skull crawler possesses prehensile tongue and tail, vocal mimicry, burrowing, and olfactory system. I think I got that right. Which allows them to pretty much just sense heat coming off of their own prey. So when it comes to abilities, it's a tie. Next up is agility. I don't really think I need to cover this one. The skull crawler wins this. Yeah. Next up is their overall size. A fully grown Indom comes in at 50 feet long, 20.6 feet tall, and weighs somewhere from 11 to 14 tons. The slightly larger juvenile crawler would come in at 45 feet long, 14 feet tall, and a bare minimum of 40 tons. When it comes to sheer size, while the Indom is larger, the skull crawler weighs much more. So for size, it's a tie. Next up is physical weapons, whose body is naturally more dangerous. The Indom has back spikes, horns, quills on her head, and razor sharp claws and teeth. The skull crawler has claws, needle thin teeth, elbow spikes, a whip-like tail with spikes on it, and a hardened skull. So when it comes to physical weapons, it's a tie. And now finally, their leverage. Now, what does this mean? Well, as it sounds, what can they do to give themselves a leverage? Starting with the endo. Now, as we addressed the durability portion, the skull crawler, while durable in the skull, is very weak everywhere else. And thanks to the endom's insanely sharp claws, she could easily tear through the skull crawler's skin. The other advantage she has is her bite, which when we look at their jaws, again, shout out Goji Center, show that her bite would be much more powerful than the skull crawler's again, allowing her to dig into the skull crawler's flesh. Now into the skull crawler. Now one thing off the bat is her head slam. If the skull crawler can land one of these on the endom, it's wraps. I mean, triceratops are known for how strong and dense their bones are. And seeing how easily the skull crawler destroyed it? Yeah, it would instantly kill the endom. Another thing is while yes, the endom could dig into the skull crawler, the skull crawler won't go down. The only way to kill a skull crawler is either with fire or complete disembowelment. So for the endom to pull that off, she'd have to put in a lot of work. And finally, the most important part of this battle, making it worth the three-year wait, is all thanks to the Killer Chameleons. Now, what do I mean? Well, in Skull Island, there are Killer Chameleons, which, as you would guess, can camouflage like real ones. Now, the Skull Crawlers, besides the actual full-on Titans like Kraken, Camelzots, and Kong on Skull Island, are the strongest and most dangerous thing there. And of course, due to the amount of them that inhabit Skull Island, the Skull Crawler will have had to come across a Chameleon and fight it to the death. 
most likely on a frequent basis. Meaning over time and many generations, they may have grown able to pick up on camouflage things, being able to pick them out easier. While it's not as good as the Indoms, it's pretty close. So the Indominus Rex's most useful ability, that being her camouflage, will now be much less effective, possibly even useless. So when it comes to has more leverage in this fight, I think it's pretty clear the Skullcrawler pulls through in this category. So with all the stats in play, who won what? The Indominus takes durability and IQ with ease. The Skullcrawler takes strength, speed, battle IQ, agility, and leverage and they tie it on abilities, overall size, and physical weaponry. So with all this info in play, the winner by just barely is the Skullcrawler. The Skullcrawler's strength, speed, and battle IQ will help it win. That along with the Indominus Rex not being durable enough to disembowel a Skullcrawler fast enough without herself sustaining serious damage is the driving factor in why the Skullcrawler barely pulls through. What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments. And this video took forever. So, if you made it this far, please consider subscribing and check out the channel if you like this content and want to see more like it. But, as always, keep collecting. Godzilla Guy, out. See ya.